Some of my favorite challenge videos have been ones where you can only move in one direction. These are great for 2D games because there's only 4 to 8 directions in general, and taking away one of those inputs requires a lot of smart thinking to complete levels. So I thought we'd try this for a 3D game, Mario 64. You'll notice that I have a live input display on the screen now. This top right ovally rectangle is R, and this white one at the bottom is Z. While I can technically move my joystick in all directions, I've disabled every input except for pushing up, as I'm sure you've noticed by now. I have no idea how this is going to go, so let's find out. Our first challenge here is getting used to these controls. Going from moving in 360 degrees to basically one is extremely jarring to get used to. The only way to get around is to use the Leica 2 in Mario Camera. And if you don't like the camera in this game, well, too bad. You just booked a three month cruise with the lad because camera control is essential. Now, believe it or not, I could barely get around the main floor. It's tricky because the camera doesn't really move besides zooming in and out. So I have to wall jump or hump the wall just to get around. But thankfully, the door leading to Bob on Battlefield doesn't require too much finessing. Once I entered the painting, I had full control again, so it was easier to get around. 20 seconds in, I discovered my worst enemy. Corners! Stupid, stupid corners! I hate you! So, corners can be a huge problem, considering the camera will often get stuck, making it very hard to get out of them. Using the Mario Cam helps a lot, but this challenge is already ridiculous. I can't even climb this elevator without difficulties. And this bridge was hard to clear simply because the camera kept moving, which just moved Mario right off the platform. I did eventually get around, and the King bob -um fight really wasn't as bad as I was thinking it'd be. I just needed to spam the camera to the side after jumping over him so I could throw him. Next was Star 2, the Koopa Race. And yes, I did lose on my first attempt. Sue me. The reason for this was because I fell down so many pits since I was trying to move quickly, and all it did was slow me down seeing as I wasn't used to this playstyle yet. Frustrated, I did two long jumps off the top and landed on the floating island to nab Star 3 instead. The next Koopa race went a lot smoother. I made sure to take my time a bit more, and I was basically set. I was gonna go back into the painting, but Mario missed, and now I was stuck on a wall. And again, I can't emphasize enough with how much this playstyle sucks. The simplest things are now a chore because I don't have a full range of movement. I worked on Star 6 next, and it was honestly pretty easy. Since I don't have the wing cap yet, I figured I might come back later for more stars. Back on the main floor, I had no idea how I was gonna get to another door. I tried backflipping around, but then I just got stuck on the stairs. Thankfully, I was able to somehow belly slide down the stairs, but like, really? What world do we live in where I have to explain how to get around the stairs? This challenge is nuts. I figured getting into Cool Cool Mountain was my best shot, but I accidentally took this back door to the basement. After backflipping my way around, I somehow escaped and had a good angle for Cool Cool Mountain. Good grief, freaking finally. I figured I'd tackle Star 1, since the slide is pretty easy. Or so I thought. As it turns out, I can't move the camera at all, so Mario just flew right off and fell into oblivion. My only chance of beating this was to control Mario's speed, which can kind of be done by jump kicking in the air, but even that doesn't work that well. I tried taking shortcuts, but that accomplished very little since I couldn't pull back to slow Mario down when falling. I was able to slow my speed by grabbing this ledge at least, and the idea was to take the hidden shortcut, but either Mario went too slow or too fast on this turn, so that wasn't viable either. After dozens of attempts, my only option was to jump near the end of the slide and ground pound a of it to halt Mario to a stop. I eventually figured out that you could move the camera down here if it was zoomed out in Mario Cam, which obviously helps us quite a bit. And miraculously, after all of that, Mario hit these walls at just the right angle and speed to where I didn't fall down this icy path and I managed to make it to the end. That took way longer than I thought it would. Next, I went for Star 2, and I don't know why, but I just had to try the speedrun route for this. And after a few attempts, I actually pulled it off albeit I needed to ground pound to survive. That really goes to show just how easy this strat is. It's mostly just holding up and letting gravity take over. For fun, I figured I'd try racing this penguin since I was somewhat used to this slide, and that didn't go well. While racing him, I did discover a pretty neat soft lock though. By diving into this corner, Mario is stuck in this animation for basically forever. There's no way to slow down, dive, ground pound, or turn. But anyway, the next star I tried was star six. Getting to the bottom of it was pretty simple. A backflip did the trick. 
After doing a pretty scary blind wall jump, I made my way up top and grabbed the star. I came to the conclusion that star 5 was going to be impossible because I can't move the cursor to select it, and I can't beat the penguin race anyway. The last thing I could do here was go for 100 red coins. I knew there was no way I was getting all the coins on the slide, so I basically had to take it multiple times and grab a few at a time to ensure I wouldn't fall off and have to start over. The red coins were scary to go for, but most of them weren't that bad. Since I had to skip on so many of the slide coins, I basically had to grab everything that was available. Eventually, I got to about 90 coins and all that was left was going to the bottom of the stage. Meticulously jumping to the pink bob -ohm, he opened up the cannon so I could have a shot at coming back for the red coin star after getting hundreds. The plan seemed to work, but I forgot about one crucial point. I entered the cannon and that's where the trouble started. I can only move this cannon in one direction, down. I really didn't want to grab the red coins again, so I shot at the slanted wall, slid forward a bit, and ledge grabbed myself to safety. I am stunned that it actually worked, and very relieved too, since that's about all the stars I can get in this stage. So after that, I smacked my way around the floor and got this very lucky bonk that positioned me right in front of Wop's Fortress. The first star was pretty manageable, considering the boss fight was a joke. Using Hoot to fly to the cage wasn't going to be an option, so I just long jumped from the tower to reach it, confirming that stars 2 and 5 are possible. Star 3 required a super precise camera angle, so I would slightly move to the left when wall jumping up top, and it managed to work out. 100 and red coins took a while, but they could both be completed. The final star is blast away the wall, but as we know, the cannon isn't going to do us any favors. I tried the cannonless strat and wasn't able to hit the right angle. Maybe this one is doable somehow, but it's really not worth going for. Leaving the Womp's Fortress room was more annoying than I want to admit, since it's so easy to get stuck on walls. Eventually, I found my way to the Jolly Roger Bay room, expecting a complete travesty. And travesty I got, because the water is quite possibly the worst aspect of this entire challenge. When Mario is submerged in water, he does not move with the camera like on land, which means I can't complete the easiest star in the game. Mario is only able to swim forward or down, so the aquarium star cannot be done. And with that fun fact, I was expecting similar results in Jolly Roger Bay. I'm lucky this cannon is poked out of the water, because at the very least, it gives me a chance to kind of position Mario in a spot where he can swim in one direction and maybe go inside the cave. With that said, it's a lot easier said than done, because when you pick a direction for Mario, he pretty much doesn't change direction for any reason whatsoever. I tried swimming across the walls to move left and right, but this only works to some extent. With this, I eventually got stuck in this corner with seemingly no way to turn around or get out of it. Talk about feeling helpless. A few attempts in, I did manage to get in front of the ship, but I really couldn't do anything more than that. The cannon didn't have a lot of options, so I decided to swim to the other portion of land towards the right. Doing this, I finally managed to line myself up and enter the cave. So at the very least, I could knock out Star 3. Now, I tried so many different methods to get into the ship so I could attempt the other stars, but the stupid eel just would not leave and I had no way of getting inside. I even tried clipping through the ship like speedrunners usually do, but I couldn't get the right angle to pull this off. There really was no hope, so since I can't move the ship, stars 1, 2, 4, and 6 are completely inaccessible. And star 5 requires the cannon or ship to get to, but neither of those are viable options either. Now, I will mention that I could shoot the cannon and land on the island by just moving the cannon down a tiny bit, but I have no method of slowing myself down or even pulling back. And even so, this strat slows down Mario even more by pointing the camera a tiny bit to the left, so it's really not gonna work. Before moving to the next level, I realized that I have no way of getting the wing cap. In order to look up into the ceiling, I have to push down on the joystick, so that means I can't get those red coins, and I can't finish the bob Battlefield stars. I mean, sure, the red coins would probably be doable, but I just moved on to Bowser in the Dark World. This was a fairly straightforward stage, because it's built in such a linear way, and the camera is very easy to navigate. After grabbing the red coin star, Bowser was next, and I didn't think he would be too hard. He turns really slowly for his first fight, so once I grabbed his tail, I tried spinning the camera around to see if that would also spin Bowser, and surprisingly, it actually does. But I took the easier route anyway, and very slowly threw him in a straight path towards the bomb. But with the knowledge that I can throw him, I'll actually have a shot at the final Bowser fight. 
All I had left to do on the main floor was Peach's slide, and actually getting there was another story. I simply could not change my angle and would always move towards the star door. Something weird with Mario Cam is that when you leave the star door, for some reason, Mario Cam locks in on Mario and faces behind him, and this only works when going through this door. This is seemingly the only way to get the Peach's slide. Now the slide itself was giving me some issues. Even if I slowed down a little bit, I was always drifting to the left and falling down. I got past this by sliding down this railing, slipping off, and finally ground pounding back on the slide. Several more ground pounds and camera changes later, I somehow got myself down the slide facing backwards. This kind of just felt like dumb luck. And no, I'm not even going to bother attempting the secret star under 21 seconds. This was obnoxious enough. After literally two and a half minutes, I finally got to the basement door so I could start trying those levels out. Catching MIPS wasn't too bad, I just needed to carefully angle my camera in the right direction, and that was about it. So the next level was Shifting Sandland. Most of the stars here were really simple, I just needed to be cautious of all the quicksand. Fighting the hands was pretty interesting, because I somehow managed to continuously jump on the right hand, and when he opened up, it took him out completely. I gotta admit, I've never done that before. And the left hand pounded the ground for like a minute straight, but eventually he went down and the star was mine. The red coins aren't going to be possible, because there's some I simply can't reach without the wing cap or better control options. Or at least, I'm not going to be getting them. A hundred coins is already going to be a pain in the butt. Also, I haven't mentioned this yet, but climbing the pyramid is such garbage. Since you can't send the camera through walls, it's so easy for Mario to get stuck and you have to constantly space yourself away from walls. Slowly but surely, I nabbed the star and was done with the stage. I moved on to Lethal Lava Land next time, and there's not really much to say here. All the stars were easy to get, although 100 coins did take quite a long time. And after that, it was time to finally drain the mode. Which wasn't really a problem, but I had to be careful to not hit the water or I might get stuck inside it. The Vanish Cap Red coins were somewhat challenging, since I couldn't really see in front of me, but I pulled through and nabbed the star. After grabbing a Toad Star, I had a feeling that Hazy Maze Cave was gonna be rough. Getting around this stage isn't too bad, but there's some sections where the camera locks in place and you can't do much about it besides try to angle Mario towards the door. I had to be very particular with getting Dory as well. Since I could only move in one direction, I basically had to wait till Dory lined up with me so I could get on and nab some stars. Star 3 and the Metal Cap stage were pretty straightforward. And back into Hazy Maze Cave, I was thinking that Star 6 might be impossible since the camera angle makes wall jumping really hard, but by triple jumping and wall jumping at the back wall, it allowed me to get up to get the star. Stars 4 and 5 are easy enough, the maze wasn't much trouble and they were easy to get to. The real struggle for Hazy Maze Cave is 100 coins. I needed to get a majority of the blue coins from this switch, and the timer is just so tight with a camera that's way too slow to work with. These coins are hard to grab when playing normally, so I was thankful that I got at least 5 of them and that was enough for 100. And the lift for the red coins was also the worst. The camera chugs behind you, which makes grabbing the coins a big pain in the neck. What felt like three years later, I got all the reds and hundred coins and was finally done with HMC. At this point, the basement was almost finished and we actually had a pretty good amount of stars. All I needed to do now was get to the second Bowser key and I actually had a chance here. Wait, wait a minute. Or we're just doomed eternally. So Mario just so happens to be facing away from the hole that we need to get through, and I don't have much of a way of turning towards it. I tried using the tornado to change my direction, I tried hitting enemies, I tried clinging onto the edges, I even put myself in a timeout, nothing was working. So unfortunately, I turned on the controller inputs to collect the ship star, and with a sad stance, it is not- <coughs> Excuse me, it is not over yet, no no no. My last idea was to talk to some Mario 64 tassers and see if they could come up with any solutions. A few of them suggested that an SBLJ might be able to bypass Dire Dire Docks entirely. Now I'm sure you've seen BLJs, the backwards long jump that lets you go really fast upstairs. An SBLJ is a much harder version of that used in Zero or One Star speedruns. This BLJ is performed on this specific set of stairs, and when the right amount of speed is built up, you can clip right through Dire Dire Docks and enter the second Bowser. The problem is doing an SBLJ while only holding up. This had never been done before. That is until Tasser Dabs went to work on this idea. Him, as well as some help from Snex, sent me this clip a day or so later. 
The footage starts with the camera getting situated facing away from the 30 star door. Then a long jump is performed and is brought back towards the stairs. While this is happening, the camera is very carefully trying to circle around Mario so it faces towards the door. Then the SBLJ is performed, Mario jumps at the wall for about 10 seconds, and boom! Just like that, we have bypassed DDD entirely. So this proves that theoretically, we can continue this challenge because an SBLJ, while only pressing up, can be performed. Now keep in mind that I skipped a lot of the technical reasonings for how this worked at all. So if you want to learn more about this, you can check out Yukikipedia, which goes into lots of details about Mario 64 task tricks. And because of this new discovery, we can continue on with the challenge and see if it's actually possible. A few of the red coins in Fire Sea were a bit hard to get to, but this level wasn't too bad. And the second Bowser fight uses the same strategy as before, spam B and win. And with that, we've got the second key. Now before going upstairs, I forgot that we hadn't tried Big Boo's Haunt yet. And holy crap, this was by far the most infuriating stage to play through. And I'm sure you can guess why. Almost every room in this mansion has a fixed camera, so trying to get anywhere is nearly impossible. You have to pray that Mario Cam moves behind you, and it doesn't want to cooperate most of the time. I started with Star 1, and just going into the rooms took an incredibly long time. I mean, look at how ridiculous this door is. The camera will not move towards it no matter what I seem to do. I did eventually get the star, but my lord, this was genuinely painful. I went for star two, only to forget that water is my mortal enemy. As soon as I jumped in, I made a fatal mistake considering I had no way of getting out of the water. Thankfully though, I can't take another route to get to the merry-go-round. Taking out the booze was pretty weird because I had to keep wall jumping my way back to them, but it was otherwise a simple star. Now, let's talk about getting to the second floor. There really was no easy way of doing this, and the main reason for that was because turning Mario when going up there was stupidly hard. The only option I found was using the sides of the stairs and diving my way up. Thankfully, the library was easy to get through and Star 3 was possible. The next star I went for was Star 5, and taking out the boo was no problem. The issue at hand is actually getting to the roof to grab the star. I did manage to get to the side, but the camera is notoriously awful on the roof. There was absolutely no way I was going to be able to turn around. I tried going back to the balcony, and I found other ways to get on the roof, but nothing was getting me close to the star. Heck, I even got to the very top of the roof, but still had no way of turning myself around. So I gave up on this star. Maybe there's a way to do this one, but I don't know how. The last thing I tried was 100 in red coins. These two stars were extremely time consuming and annoying and required a lot of trial and error, but you could get them both. Now, I don't know about you, but I am ready to move on from this stupid level. Now, while I had to punch my way to get to this door, at last we've made it to the next floor. I jumped into Wet Dry World next, and I know I can't get every star here, but I figured we'd try to get a few. Star 1 was pretty easy, since you can just teleport yourself to the top, and oh my god, it feels so good to have a free roaming camera again. You have no idea. You really have no idea. It was a little tricky getting to the top of this stage, but I found a solution by using this heave ho, and it was the simplest and most consistent method. Getting to Star 2 wasn't too bad. I just had to play carefully. Star 3 was basically the same steps as the previous star, so this was also possible. Star 4 required me to be really quick, but I managed to just barely get on the elevator in time. Stars 5 and 6 weren't going to be possible because I have no way of getting to them, and the water would stop me in my tracks anyway. So I just decided to move on. I nabbed the next Toad Star and traveled to Snowman's Land. And frankly, all the stars here were really easy. I don't have much to add besides that I'm glad to have a bit of a break. The Igloo was a little annoying, I guess, but nothing compares to Big Boo's Haunt. Seriously, that level is gonna haunt me for the rest of my life. And up next was Tall Tall Mountain, and this world was a bit of a handful. It's not even that it was that challenging. This is just such a large level, and it took some time to get around. Although I will admit that getting across this log was terrifying. My camera needed to be angled perfectly for it to even work. All the stars here were possible, and the only one worth mentioning is 100 in red coins. This was, as you'd expect, really time consuming, mainly because of the slide. Trying to get the right angles to simply survive was so difficult, and I had to do this slide a couple of times to get extra coins that I needed. I did eventually get all these stars, it just took a little while. So I had a pretty bizarre strategy for star 6. Since I could only move in one direction, I simply long jumped towards the mushroom while being high up the mountain, and this actually worked out perfectly. It's pretty funny how many methods there are to getting this star. 
The following level was Tiny Huge Island, and stars 1 and 2 were a cakewalk. Star 4 was very tedious though, since the camera didn't want to play nice, and in general, this level is just hard to navigate. What I was actually worried about though was Star 3, the Koopa rematch. The wind on this bridge was likely to be problematic. What the f- I have no idea how I didn't fall, but okay, I guess I'll take the star. The rest of the stars here were manageable, but there's not much more I can add. The 100 coins took forever as you'd expect, and one of the red coins took a precise wall jump to get to, and the Wiggler fight was also pretty easy to fight. So after wrapping up the course, I nabbed the final Toad Star and jumped into Wing Mario over the rainbow. Now obviously, there's no way I can finish this one. The most red coins I could get was three. So all that's really left is TikTok Clock and Rainbow Ride. One thing I quickly learned about TikTok Clock is how bad the camera is. Normally the camera is all right, but it always gets stuck at the wall. So Mario always heads towards that direction, and it's like this for the entire stage. I was finally smart and went for the 100 coins first to get it out of the way. You know, I don't know why I haven't been doing that this entire time. The blue coins, of course, are essential for this stage, and while I didn't grab all of them, I got enough to get 100 coins. And let me tell you, it was a nice feeling getting the hundreds out of the way, and the rest of the stars really weren't that bad. Like I said, I just had to put up with the garbage camera, but all the other stars could be done. And after that, we just had Rainbow Ride to do. The first star I went for was 100 coins, and I gotta be honest, it was going pretty well. That's mostly because the camera was actually being a good boy and listening to me. He was so easy to work with since the level is so wide open. But then came the problem of the blue coins. I tried wall jumping up this wall dozens of times, and I could barely do more than two jumps at once. So scrap that star, I suppose. I decided I'd just go for the red coins instead. I had to make a lot of blind jumps to get them, but it really wasn't that bad. Also, I do apologize that my footage might be a little choppy for the rest of this video. I've been having computer issues where my recording software stutters every once in a while. But anyway, the rest of the stars were pretty simple to knock out. Tricky Triangles, I guess, was the toughest one, but honestly, we're ready. It's time to take on Final Bowser and finish this challenge up. The red coins weren't much trouble, because this is another stage where the camera is really easy to move around. We grabbed our final star, and it was go time. Good old Rainbow Bowser. I slowly hit him with the bomb once, then twice, and now came the hard part. All I had to do now was spam the camera to the side, and over time, I started to build some decent speed. It was incredibly hard to aim my throw, but I actually had a shot at this. And then, it happened. Bowser took a bomb to the face, and just like that, we can confirm that it is possible to beat Super Mario 64 while only pressing up. Quite frankly, I can't believe we actually made it this far. I thought we would have gotten stuck in several places, and my god, this challenge got so tedious at points. But really, we only got stuck in dire dire docks. And even then, the SM64 tasters figured out a solution. And there you have it, guys. I think we probably could have gotten a few more stars, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with how many I was able to get. And that is gonna wrap up this video, so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and stay safe out there. I'll see you in the next one.